All right, good evening everyone and welcome. Um, welcome to Stan State Nursing School's Fall Cohort 2022 Pinning Ceremony. So our, my name is Oscar and this is Ali and we are the Masters of the Ceremony for tonight's event. Um, we want to extend a special warm welcome to all our friends, family and faculty and all other participants who, help, who will help us celebrate this milestone. Um, we want to welcome those joining us virtually and how about a round of applause for everybody. <laughs> All right, so uh, as a friendly reminder, right now would probably be a good time to silence your all cell phones. Um, so as mentioned, tonight is a very special moment um, for the graduating class of the uh, this year's graduating class, and tonight we celebrate um, the fall semester. And without further ado, I will introduce um, Dr. Wendy Matthews with a welcoming address. So we'll turn it over to Wendy, Dr. Wendy Matthews. What a journey, huh? Yeah. Long road. Well, good evening. Welcome to the pre-licensure baccalaureate pinning ceremony for the class of 2022. This ceremony provides an opportunity for us to recognize the graduates and to welcome them to the nursing profession. Thank you to those in attendance for helping us to celebrate the efforts of these individuals in this celebration of their accomplishments. like to welcome our first student speaker, Zoe James. Friends, family, faculty, thank you so much for joining us tonight as we celebrate a day three long years in the making. I say long years, though it feels like only yesterday we stepped foot in the skills lab for the first time, bright-eyed and terrified for what was to come. Remember when what we were stressed about was writing a good soap note and taking vital signs? I cried so many times over taking blood pressures. <laughs> if only we could go back in time and tell ourselves to quit worrying about this first semester stuff because it is nothing compared to what's to come. And boy, by the time second semester came around, we had been well and truly thrown for a loop. But we are resilient, and we found ourselves at clinicals for the first time, dazed and confused, wondering why they would ever let us touch an actual human patient. <laughs> and then having to come in the day before and spend hours picking out said patient and spending all that time on those lovely characters but it was a, love, a wonderful learning experience as well, as it was our first opportunity to apply the skills we've been practicing on fruit, stuffed animals, and whatever y'all did your foley's on. <laughs> I know I made a Play-Doh model myself. <laughs> and then third, we don't have to talk about third if y'all don't want to. <laughs> Though, despite the, ch the intensity and the difficulty that semester is known for and lived up to, it is still quite a special experience to witness new life be brought into the world and care for some of the most fragile human beings in the hospital. And there's great satisfaction to be found in stepping up to such a huge challenge, rising to it, and coming out the other side, mostly intact. And it must not have been too scarring since a handful in this wonderful cohort here earned coveted jobs in the field. Next was fourth. And fourth was unlike anything we had experienced up until that point. Two completely new clinical environments, one of which just the community at large and even putting us in some um, people's homes. I will never forget the things I saw, did, and heard that semester. And I truly appreciate how it pushed us out of our comfort zones. That is, if a comfort zone can exist in nursing school, Fifth was kind of like the downhill slope of the program. Things are getting easier and we're accelerating faster and faster towards our end goal. Or maybe a downward spiral, up to you. But either way, we held our own in ICUs and emergency departments, 
ORs, and assorted mud search floors, and we came out on top. Which brings us to sixth, oh six. The closest we got to being a nurse without a license on the line, at least not our own. <laughs> we got to advance our skills and advance our knowledge with the help of incredibly selfless nurses who totally did not have to sign up for 200 plus hours of babysitting us. <laughs> but I don't know how this semester made five months feel like five weeks but it has brought us here together tonight. Nothing about this journey has been easy, and a lesson I had to learn very quickly was that asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. We call codes and rapid responses for a reason, because we recognize the need for help and support in a critical situation. I mean, we all need our own personal rat team to fall back upon now and then, or else none of this would be possible. Which brings me to the thank you portion of the speech. To our friends, family, and assorted loved ones, I want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. This could not have happened without you. I'm sure we annoyed you with our constant nursing stories, our woes about grades, and our limited schedules due to clinicals and classes. But you loved us anyways, and you supported us anyways, and I am beyond grateful. And to my beautiful, wonderful, astounding cohort, <laughs> if anyone else says they have the best cohort, they're lying because clearly it is us. I mean, y'all saw all the gorgeous photos, like look at us, we're so fun. <laughs> it, you are some of the most kind, smart, determined, funny people that I have ever met. And I'm so grateful to have gotten to learn with you and from you. And of course, a huge thank you to our faculty for sharing their knowledge, checking in on us, answering countless panic texts and emails at all hours of the day, all days of the week, and keeping things running behind the scenes, for which I am grateful. Now, I don't want to take up too much more of your time tonight, as I'm sure we are all on the edge of our seats excited for the pinning part of the pinning ceremony. But in my research, it seems that all good speeches include a quote from a celebrity, a politician, or otherwise important person. So I'll wrap up with a quote from the world-renowned scholar, Oscar Sandoval. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a student who graduates last in their class from med school? A doctor. Now I know this is a nursing ceremony, but I think the message still stands. We are all equals on this stage earning the same degree and the same honor. And that honor is being a nurse. Thank you all so much, and let's get on with the darn thing, shall we? <laughs> Thank you, Zoe, well done. Okay, so next we have this faculty speaker, and I get to reintroduce Dr. Wendy Matthews. for sharing the educational journey of your cohort. You have all accomplished so much throughout the program. I'm so happy to be here. I'm very proud of you all. I had the privilege of being one of the faculty members teaching this amazing group of graduates during their first semester in nursing school. The course was Foundations of Clinical Nursing Practice. This course is all about learning the fundamental nursing skills required to enter a clinical setting. Some of those things included like starting IVs or a medication pass, dressing changes, all those types of things, and you can imagine many others. The general expectations when the students leave that course is that they have developed fundamental nursing skills to become competent and competent in a clinical setting. However, there was one little thing that happened, um, something that none of us signed up for and what was definitely not expected was that pandemic that completely derailed our very organized and well thought out course. To tell you it was a huge challenge is definitely an understatement. How can faculty help students become competent in nursing skills while viewing students' performance through this tiny little box on the Zoom screen? And how can students develop the confidence 
to practice safely without being in a class, especially a class that relies very heavily on hands-on skills. So before I address those questions, I'd like to share a quote with you by Florence Nightingale. The best nurses have the essential qualifications before they ever attend nursing school. One of those essential qualifications is perseverance. Perseverance is defined as a continued effort to do or to achieve something despite difficulties or opposition. Reflecting on that definition, I would definitely say this cohort persevered. They were expecting to learn nursing skills and instead they were forced to learn so much more than that. They had to become Zoom experts. They had to figure out how to show competence and skills checkoffs with random household items. Just to name a few of my personal favorites, they used raw, uh, strawberries for urethras. They created wounds from old bread. <laughs> that one was like my favorite. Um, they displayed the venous system through an elaborate interconnected set of cups. That was pretty amazing. They used teddy bears to demonstrate tracheostomy care, and they presented anatomically correct body parts using Play-Doh. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. In addition, they had to become videographers because how do you show your faculty you know what you're doing unless you can get that perfect angle, right? The entire education became virtual. They were learning from home through their laptops without all the benefits we have on campus. Literally, everything was virtual. Simulations, their lectures, pre and post conferences, even clinical hours were completed virtually. Now we all know nursing school is difficult and the pandemic added an additional layer to an already very stressful situation. However, this group of students accepted the COVID challenge. They continued to meet their goals and they even stepped up to help the community by administering vaccinations at the vaccination clinic for COVID vaccination clinic. So graduates, I cannot imagine at all what your experience has been like, but you have proven that you have the essential, essential qualifications of a nurse. When the students asked me to speak tonight, I really wanted to highlight the uniqueness of this cohort. They have experienced something that hasn't been experienced before. So I sent out a survey with many questions, and one of the questions I asked in the survey was, considering your nursing journey, what are you most proud of? Over half of the responses I got included their ability to persevere. I would like to share some of the responses with you. One student said, I am most proud of our ability to persevere through challenging times and to finish our commitment to nursing school. And despite all adversities, I persevered. Another student shared, I am most proud of following through with nursing school. It took a lot of resilience and perseverance, but I'm extremely glad that I never gave up. Even on the days when I wanted to quit, my peers encouraged me to keep going. I asked many questions. I asked what their favorite memory was in nursing school. I asked how they would describe their nursing cohort. I asked them what they would like all of you to know, their family and friends and loved ones, about their journey through nursing school. Their responses were solidly focused on gratitude and love. Gratitude for their cohort, gratitude and love for all of you. So these graduates recognize the importance of perseverance, but more than that, they recognize the importance of others in their own success. To the graduates, you have proven yourselves to have many of the essential qualifications to be resilient nurses. As you move forward in your nursing journey, remember how far you've come and let it serve as inspiration for what lies ahead. You may not know the outcome, but if you, the past is any indication, you will get through it just as you've gotten through everything that has led to this moment. Congratulations. I cannot wait to see all the amazing things you will continue to do. about the history of the nursing pen. Um, the nursing pen's long history dates back more than a thousand years into the 12th century, way before you guys were born. I was born around then. <laughs> During this violent
violent time period, those who were devoted to caring for injured and ill were given that large Maltese cross that you see in the movies. However, it's a legacy of Florence Nightingale, hundreds of years later, that has influenced modern day nursing school pity ceremonies. Hospitals recognized Nightingale's impact on nursing and began creating these pinning ceremonies in about the mid-1880s. I was worried about that. By 1916, pinning ceremonies were common in the U.S. and England. Since then, colleges and universities have created their own pins, as ours has been created, and many are produced for these ceremonies. This pinning ceremony symbolizes the graduates' achievements of completing the educational requirements and marks their transition into our devoted profession. Congratulations. All right, thank you, Sherry. Okay, so next, we are going to go ahead and get started with the pinning ceremony, and for that, we'd like to introduce Denora Fernandez. I would like to congratulate you all and welcome you into our nursing profession. Um, know that we've prepared you well. I know you're all going to do amazing. Um, first, we're going to start with uh, the first uh, group, Group A. If the parents or uh, loved ones can line up in preparation for the pinning. Um, if you're graduate, has the last name starting with A through D. Denise Asis. She is being pinned by her parents, Freddie and Edith Asis. Too small. <laughs> Being pinned. 
championed by her sister, Jazdeep Bassi. Matthew Chapko. He is being pinned by his parents, Roberto and Yolanda Chapko. Hana Chan. He is being pinned by his parents, Kinteri and Nara. Jessica Dukilia. She is being pinned by her mother, Maria Dukilia. Can I please have the second group of parents and loved ones line up, please? If your graduate um, has a last name um, F through L.
Jasmine Brando. She is being pinned by Manresa and Emerson Brando. Garcia. She is being pinned by her parents, Raquel and Eliseo Garcia. Blanca Gonzalez. She is being pinned by her parents, Fernando and Guadalupe Bustos. Amelia Harris. She is being pinned by her daughters, Caitlin Groves and Maya Starks. by her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Era. Our next graduate, Giselle Hernandez. She is being pinned by her parents, Mari and Antonio Hernandez.
James. She is being pinned by her parents, Karen and Richard James. Amber Kwong. She is being pinned by her parents, Wendy Lee and Donald Kwong. Travis Lee. He is being pinned by his parents, oh, no. <laughs> Vivian Liang and Ming Li. and final group of parents, loved ones, line up, please. and Charles Newman.
championed by her parents, Jessica Sagri and Takir Sagri. by her parents, Jerry and Grace Orozco. Meet Pabla. She is being pinned by her parents, Sergeet and Kuljeet Pabla. He is being pinned by his girlfriend, Emily Hayden, and his little princess, Delilah Sandoval. She is being pinned by Scott and Jessica Salisha. Sophia Tavar. <laughs> she is being pinned by her mother, Leonor, and her partner, Joe Sandoval.
she is being pinned by her husband, Jacob Young. Now that we have the pin and our RNs, we'd like to have, I want to have you guys stand first. And the faculty to stand, nurses. And anybody in the audience who's a nurse, please stand. Uh, the Florence Nightingale Pledge is in the program, and we are going to recite it together. All right, you guys, you guys. Oh, they don't have them. It's on, look at the screen. It's on the screen. Okay. I solemnly pledge myself before God in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my professional faithfully. I will abstain from whatever is delicious and mischievous <laughs> and will not take or knowingly administer any harmful threat. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in the practice of my calling. With loyalty will I endeavor to aid the physician in his work and devote myself to the welfare of those in my care. All right, class, I expect you to go out, make a difference in the world, and be successful in your journey on. Thank you. All right, and uh, now I'd like to present our last student speaker of the evening, Amber Nguyen. for coming out tonight to celebrate this amazing milestone and accomplishment in all of our lives. Friends, family, faculty, we couldn't have made it here with all, without all of your unconditional love and support. A special shout out to my loved ones in the audience and at home and my girls for life. Come on, ha, wo yu to te, wo ka ping, bong yang wo dai. Toi nai Con muốn cảm ơn gia đình của con giúp nuôi con mấy năm nay. Three years ago, I remember crying about getting into nursing school. Some of those tears were tears of joy, ecstatic that all of my hard work paid off and got me accepted into a great nursing program. Other tears were shed thinking about where the heck is Turlock and what is there to do there? <laughs> Am I gonna make any friends? Oh God, I hope I make at least one friend. And tonight, I have the honor of celebrating with you all, fighting back tears that the past three years have been some of the most incredible, life-changing years of our lives. It's Sagittarius in me, I'm sorry. <laughs> As Zoe mentioned earlier, and I'm sure everyone in this room is well aware of, nursing school was not easy. Right as we were getting comfortable giving each other bed baths in the sim lab, 
a not so little virus named COVID-19 emerged and changed all of our lives. When we said we were tired of coming to class and wish we could just stay home, that was definitely not what we meant. We went from seeing each other at least three times a week in class to seeing each other in little boxes on Zoom for the next five semesters. While most of us enjoyed the luxury of rolling out of bed and hopping on Zoom five minutes right before class, we missed human connection. This is what made those dreaded mornings of waking up at 4 a.m. for clinical all worth it. Despite how tired and tired looking we were at the end of each 12 hour shift, clinicals were the one place where our social batteries and hearts were recharged with each other's love and support. While the pandemic almost entirely uprooted our nursing school journey, it also taught us many essential lifelong lessons. For starters, we all learned how to use Zoom. Although, I don't think Matthew ever learned how to stop his audio from cutting off for every presentation. We also learned how to be resilient and how to persevere. We, along with our faculty, pushed each other to learn, to grow, to care, to advocate, to love, to be better nurses, and to be better people. Not a day went by where we weren't holding each other's hands or crying on each other's shoulders. Whether those be tears of joy from finally passing third semester or tears of sadness from writing our mile-long Sentinel event paper. <laughs> Above all, nursing school taught us that we are strong. And yes, that was Mama's fault for the Sentinel event <laughs> paper. <laughs> we didn't just pass nursing school, guys. We survived nursing school in the middle of a freaking pandemic. <laughs> Allie has been our countdown queen throughout nursing school. Counting down the days we had left in each semester. But I'm really sorry to break it to you. Tonight, I'm afraid your job is over. Here we are, guys. I'm pretty sure that even on our last day of preceptorship, we said to our patients, uh, let me go ask my nurse. And that's when the realization probably hit all of us. The realization that the next time we step foot into the hospital, we won't be saying, let me ask my nurse, because, well, we will be the nurses. And as frightening as that may be, I am 100% confident that each and every one of us is more than prepared to be incredible nurses. We were taught early in our first semester that nursing is a science and an art. Every class, exam, checkoff, and clinical day taught us the science portion of nursing. However, it's been every patient interaction and relationship that we've built with our patients families, friends, preceptors, and faculty that have really shown us the art of nursing. We all know that compassion is at the core of nursing care, and there's no doubt in my mind that any of us are lacking in that department. Tonight, we graduate with our Bachelors of Science in Nursing and officially get to join the exclusive BSN Club. In the months to come, we will be celebrating the holidays with loved ones, applying for jobs, enjoying the post-grad life, and religiously studying for the dreaded NCLEX. To all of you in the audience and at home, just as a fair disclaimer, we will be crying all throughout the week before, on the day of, and immediately after taking the NCLEX, <laughs> until we get the long-awaited and well-deserved news that we are officially registered nurses. While some of us already have jobs waiting after taking the NCLEX, Others are taking their own unique path into the nursing profession. Nonetheless, no matter what path we take or how we get there, each of us is going to be an incredible nurse and change the lives of our patients in one way or another. Long gone are the days of asking Jen to put our names back in the cup. <laughs> gone are the mornings that we walked in to clinical known as the walking blood clot, if you knew our red scrubs and broke off into individual emboli as we made our way into the different departments. Gone are the times of not remembering if we were supposed to convert to milliliters or milligrams, only to realize it was neither. Gone are the times of hopping on YouTube to hear, 
Hey y'all, it's Sarah from Registered Nurse RN. <laughs> or Kathy Parks going. Okay, in this video, we're gonna be talking about whatever. And gone are the times of calling to wake each other up at 5 a.m. for clinical. And I mean mainly waking Jessica up. <laughs> Despite all these coming to an end, what will never end are the memories, connections, and relationships we've created. All the times we've celebrated birthdays and holidays, stressed over interviews, cried over failed math tests, and laughed over being delirious after eight straight hours of studying. None of those memories and feelings are leaving us tonight. Our love and support for one another are forever, and this family we've built is forever. Congratulations, guys. We made it. I love you guys. Let's go eat. We would like to invite Dr. Wendy Matthew back up. On behalf of our cohort, we would like to present our class picture to the School of Nursing. in it. Um, so, so you don't have to wait too long to go eat. <laughs> I want to congratulate you all on your accomplishments. Oh. <laughs> Thank goodness. Woo. So as we conclude this pinning ceremony, <laughs> I want you to remember that your nursing pin should not be considered just a piece of jewelry or a mere reminder of graduation. Your CSU Stanislaus nursing pin connects you to all the CSU Stanislaus nurses who have come before you, many in this room, and to every nurse who has ever accepted the responsibilities of this great and rewarding profession. It has been an honor to be a part of your journey on the path to becoming a CSU Stanislaus professional nurse. You are also very, I, I, we, we are also very proud of you, and congratulations. Once again, we would just like to thank you all for being here, and I'd like to invite our faculty to stand for us. Laura, Josh, you too. Come up, come up here, you guys. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us over the past three years. You each have played a very unique role in getting us this far. We couldn't have made it without you guys. Thank you. <laughs> To my awesome cohort, if you'll please stand. <laughs> cohort Fall 2022, congratulations. We did it! <laughs> And that concludes tonight's ceremony. Thank you all.